Hey there, lovely people. Chef Jana, welcome back. Guys, I have um, the most comfort of the pastas that you can think about. I have spaghetti bolognese. And uh, if you think about comfort food, if you think about, uh, well, you think about Italian food, you, uh, you automatically think about comfort. You think about uh, hospitality, you think about simplicity. And that's what it's present in most households all over the world. I mean, this is a dead simple dish to make. And um, for some reason, I haven't seen many um, vegans uh, making spaghetti bolognese. I have seen them making it using lentils, but I wanted to bring that um, mama feel to it. And again, I wanted to find um, something that would have a proper texture of a ragu. So for this dish, what I have done was that I have shredded um, this is uh, a seitan hamburger and then I had two, now I have two more, but at, at the moment I had two. So I crushed them, uh, post it in the food processor, post it, and then it created this very nice uh, crumbles. And it was fantastic because the texture and um, it was just perfect. And, uh, but enough with that. Let's get it. Let's not get ahead of the horses, and let's start. Well, we start with um, two lipids, and by two lipids, I mean um, two kinds of fat. We're going to add olive oil. Please don't freak out. I know I say all the time no olive oil, but for this recipe, you will understand why. Olive oil mixed with a knob of butter now can it be can it be margarine no you have to use butter because in italy you have the emilia romagna uh, uh, region and there there's uh, where the spaghetti bolognese come from from bologna and in there because it's a little bit further north they use a lot of butter as opposed to the south that they use uh, olive oil almost all over the central and south so since we are going for the real spaghetti bolognese. I decided to make a traditional, very proper spaghetti from Bologna. Now, you add mirepoix. And the reason why you add mirepoix is because we're having uh, an acid base, which is tomatoes. Tomatoes, they have sugar, but they are also a little bit acidic. And the mirepoix, which contains um, uh, a lot of sugar because of the carrots and the um, celery and the onions. It balances the acidity of the tomato. So there's no need to add that stupid sugar that people add. Sometimes I get crazy when I see people doing that. There's no need. You just use a proper mirepoix at the beginning and that would be perfect. What we're gonna do now, we're not gonna looking for color. I don't want it to caramelize, I want it to get translucent, transparent. And that's gonna let that's gonna be about five, six minutes in medium, medium low heat. And then you let the vegetables do its work. A pinch of salt, because I want the vegetables to draw all that water, and the salt makes it happen. Right. Almost there. All right, now at this point, we add the garlic. As much as you would like, this is very personal. I find myself, sometimes I love lots of garlic, sometimes I hate it, but then I think it depends on the garlic itself. If, if I buy organic, it's very easy because it's, re, it's the flavor is not so like punchy. It's a little bit more, um, can I say velvety? I don't know. It's a little bit more round, you know? It doesn't like punch you. Yeah, and again, it has to do with the way you cook it. If you overcook it, it's gonna be unbearable. If you do not cook it, it's gonna ruin your food. So yeah, that's the mysteries of the garlic. At this point, we add the seitan, the seitan hamburger. There. 
And now, because it's kind of already cooked, you know, seitan have been cooked before, you don't need to overcook it. You just saute it for about two, three minutes. Again, medium to medium low heat. We don't want to burn anything. Very, very important for this dish is oregano, of course. What Italian pasta with red sauce doesn't have oregano. And that is, again, essential in the Bologna uh, cuisine. Uh, if you're making uh, spaghetti bolognese, they add a little bit of milk. One third of a cup of soy milk and sweetened. Uh, again, milk is base and it takes away that acid uh, edge from the tomatoes. Again, two minutes more. Saute it for two minutes more. And now, very important as well, because it creates a little bit of a depth of flavor, a little bit of nutmeg. Feel free to add, like I said before, lentils, or you can much, oh my God, this is so fantastic. You can add um, crumbled, uh, scrambled um, uh, tofu. I mean, you crush it in your hand and then instead of the, the seitan, you add the tofu. It is, oh my God, so delicious. You can add anything. I am here looking for the most ultimate comfort, um, simple bolognese ragu. And I have been making that for many, many years. And this is the recipe that I have found that it's like very, close to the ones that they make in Bologna. So we're gonna make our vegan one here. And no one will say that it's not vegan. I betcha. Nobody's gonna say, oh my God, it's not vegan. Quite the opposite. It's fantastic. Now we can add the tomatoes. All right, we're gonna talk about the tomatoes now. This is the most important uh, foundation brick of this sauce, tomatoes. So I have a lot to say about these. First, organic. Second, San Marzano tomatoes. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be San Marzano from Italy, from uh, the San Marzano um, town. Although the ones that grow up around San Marzano, because it's on the foot of the Vesuvio uh, Vulcan, uh, they have much more minerals going on and then they grow up with this delicious. If you have been there and if you have tried the tomatoes there, if you do just put them on a grill and it tastes it's just like, come on, what, this is real tomatoes? This is how real tomatoes taste like. So if you, get, if you can get your hands on uh, the real Sommerzano tomatoes, the elongated ones, the ones from actually from Sommerzano, even better. But nowadays you can have uh, tomatoes, the same uh, tomatoes that grow up all over the United States or Europe or Spain. So don't go crazy. I mean, you don't need to go after that. Although today is a little bit easy because globalization, you can buy it everywhere. But that is very important. Get your hands on a very proper Summerzano quality organic tomatoes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to smash this a little bit so the tomatoes they get a little bit more crushed i do not blend them because i like these here and there uh, pieces of tomato I, I like it rustic and a good italian ragu is about a rusticity is there is such a word probably but that's the thing i like those bits and pieces going on the sauce and i don't like it liquid no so now what we're gonna do is just like do we lower the heat, um, medium low to low heat and let it simmer. Now, I like my ragu, I don't know about you, I like my ragu really thick. I like it thick and I like it rich. And for that, I think it will be simmering here for about 35 to 40 minutes. It can be longer if you have time and then you keep adding water or vegetable broth. But to me, just now the way it looks, perfect. So I'm gonna let it simmer for 35, 40 minutes and then I will be back to show you the final result. All right, we are back with our ragu ready. Like I said to you before, it was simmering for in low heat for exactly 40 minutes. 
and that is the consistency that I wanted. It's, can you see? Look at that. I'll close up for you. Look, that's perfection because I like it when you see bits and pieces of tomato, you can see the, the and feel and taste obviously the carrots and the celery. I mean, you can definitely feel all those textures and different depths of flavor. So this is perfect. And what I have here is a proper simple spaghetti, which I have uh, cooked in water with some uh, drops of lemon. So it doesn't get sticky. Don't forget at the end to add Italian parsley, chop it and add it. It will again add some more of the uh, Italian feel to it and a little bit more freshness. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig in. You have no idea how good this house smells. Oh, Bologna. Bologna la grassa because it's a lot of fat, delicious food there. Bologna la dotta because SMART, the uh, first uh, university in Europe, was in Bologna. And Bologna la rossa, the red one because it was communist. So very, a lot of interesting things happening. Oops, don't fall. In Bologna. And as a result, this magnific magnificent food. But we cannot start eating before adding la creme de la creme in this case parmesan like a lot of parmesan click click on the on the link above because i have taught you guys how to make this parmesan and here we go this is going to be interesting mm. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my dear Lord. If this is not delicious, simple food, I don't know what it is. I mean, another one. Come on. <laughs> Come here. Mm. Oh my God. This is, if I could describe, describe happiness, tranquility, comfort, family in a bowl, I will describe this. It never fails to please everybody. It's like a welcome food all over the world. So I couldn't get on without showing you my version of the spaghetti bolognese. Guys, thanks for watching. I, I hope you've had a wonderful new year. I had, it was very nice. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, pass it along if you like this video. And I see you next time. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Can I eat from the pan? Yes, I can. This is my food. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> mm. Buonissimo. 50 shades of I can't stop eating. <laughs> Chef Jonas movie. Mm. Mmm. Oh my god. I love that.